Hello everyone, welcome back to another Intro to Signals and Systems video. Today's video topic is the impulse response of the ideal discrete time low pass filter. So let's get started. Okay, today's task is to find the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter that has the frequency response shown here. Now it's important to remember that for discrete time system frequency responses, they are periodic with period 2 pi. So that this is the main frequency response from minus pi to plus pi, and then it just repeats outside of that. So we see a copy at plus 2 pi, we see a copy at minus 2 pi, and these copies continue forever um, out to minus infinity and plus infinity. Okay, so the ideal impulse, the response impulse response of the ideal low-pass filter is defined as the inverse Fourier transform of that ideal frequency response. So it's just the inverse discrete time Fourier transform of that function h of e, e to the j omega hat. We use omega hat for the frequency variable for discrete time. So we just write the definition of the inverse DTFT. It's 1 over 2 pi the integral from minus pi to plus pi of h of e to the j omega hat times e to the plus j omega hat n and then we integrate with respect to the frequency variable omega hat. Okay, so this is the main definition of the uh, inverse uh, DTFT. Um, now we have to look at how we're going to plug in for this exact function. So we notice that um, h of e to the j omega is 0 between minus pi and minus pi over 4, and between pi over 4 and pi. So we can just change the limits on this integral and then substitute in for what we see here. So if we do that, this changes over to 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus pi over 4 to plus pi over 4, 1 e to the plus j omega hat n d omega hat. Okay, that's an easy integral to perform because we know that the integral of a complex exponential is just that same complex exponential. So we can write this as 1 over 2 pi times 1 over j n the reason we have to have that is that um, j and n here are basically constants with respect to omega. Um, and so we need those uh, to divide by those to get the integral right. And then we e to the plus j omega hat n is the integral. And then we evaluate that between minus pi over 4 and plus pi over 4, which are the limits. So if we do that, that's pretty straightforward to do. Um, we can write this as 1 over pi n times 2j, just rearranging that a little bit, times e to the plus j, substituting in now pi over 4, n minus e to the minus j, pi over 4, n. And then we figure out what that's equal to. And if we notice, this 2j could actually be moved under here uh, into the denominator here. And when we do that, we realize, oh, that looks like exactly like sine if we in remember inverse Eulers. And so um, then we can just rewrite this as sine of pi over 4 n over pi n. So that is our final answer for what um, the uh, impulse response of this discrete time low pass filter is equal to. Okay, on the previous slide, we solved for what the impulse response of the ideal discrete time low pass filter is, uh, and we came up with this equation here for that impulse response. Now we'd like to say, well, what, what does this look like? If we were going to do a sketch of this impulse response, what would it look like? And we see that there's, we would expect some sort of sinusoidal variation due to the sign in the numerator, but we also uh, expect that. Um, the impulse response is going to be getting smaller as we get larger values of n due to the fact that we have this n in the denominator here. So we can actually um, 
do a sketch of this, um, or we could do a plot in software like MATLAB. So let's see what the plot in MATLAB would look like, and then try and see how we could have done um, calculated some key parameters by hand. Okay, here is the impulse response for this ideal low-pass filter, this specific uh, function here, um, that I plotted in MATLAB. Okay, so this is a MATLAB plot, and I've shown it only over the region from n equal minus 20 to n equal plus 20, but it's really important to remember that this is an infinite length impulse response. It goes on forever towards positive infinity, and it goes on forever towards negative infinity. The ideal low-pass filter is an is a non-causal system. Um, it um, goes infinite length in both directions. Okay, so it's important to remember that we can only sketch it over some finite region. But this impulse response, notice, has the behavior we, we expected. It looks kind of sinusoidal, um, but it's getting lower as you go out to negative infinity and out to positive infinity, and that's due to the scaling by uh, 1 over n in the function. Um, now, one thing you may notice is that, well, what's going on here at h of 0? So at h of 0, if we just plug into the formula, we would get sine of 0 over pi times 0. Well, that would be 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we have to do something extra to get the value there. Right? And we have to, in fact, use L'Hopital's rule to figure out what the value is going to be at 0. Um, and so we do that. Right? We can rewrite h of 0 is going to be the derivative with respect to n of the numerator. So the ddn of pi over 4n over the derivative with respect to n of the denominator. And then we evaluate that at n equals 0. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So we get cosine of pi over 4n times pi over 4, because when we take the derivative, we also have to take the derivative of the inside. And derivative of pi over 4n is pi over 4. And uh, the derivative of the denominator, which is just pi. And then we evaluate that at n equals 0. So on top, we'd get pi over 4 times cosine of 0 over pi. And cosine of 0 is 1, so it just becomes pi over 4 over pi, which is 1 fourth. So let's check and see, is that what I got there? And if we look here at n equals 0, it should be 0.25. And if I go over here, lo and behold, it is 0.25. So my sketch is actually correct. Okay, so we just found um, that the, um, the value at 0 is 1 quarter, uh, and that's correct here. Maybe now we would like to check and make sure that basically the period of this sinusoid is correct. So maybe we'd check to see, well, where do we expect this to go to 0? Um, so we look here at the numerator. It's going to go, h of n is going to be 0 whenever that numerator is 0. Um, and so we're looking for whenever sine of pi over 4 n is equal to 0. Well, we know that sine goes to 0 when the argument in here, when pi over 4 n is a multiple of pi, right? Because it's 0 at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, etc. So it's a multiple of pi. So mathematically, we could write that out as pi over 4 n is equal to pi times k, where k is some integer. Okay, so we could just solve for the values of n where this is true. So that'll be pi k um, over pi over 4. And that just reduces to the pi's cancel out and it reduces to 4k. So this is at multiples of 4, because k is an integer. So at any multiples of 4, we should expect... Um, the impulse response to be 0, and we see that that is indeed true. At minus 4, it's 0. At 4, it's 0. At 8, it's 0. Um, let's see, the next one would be 12, um, etc., right? So at multiples of 4, we expect this to go to 0. So we can predict, um, based on this equation, 
exactly where this function will have its zero crossings because it's determined by the value of this sign. That's a good way to check if we've done the plot using some um, computational software, that's a good way to check uh, whether we've done the plot correctly. Okay, to summarize, we've shown that the ideal discrete time low pass filter with this frequency response has an impulse response that's equal to sine pi over 4n over pi n, and that that, that impulse response looks like this picture, with the caveat that this extends infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. So that's what we've shown that we can do um, just by taking the inverse uh, discrete time Fourier transform of the frequency response to get the impulse response. Okay, now we can ask ourselves a couple of questions for further study. We can ask, well, suppose that we define a new frequency response that's A times the old frequency response, where A is just some number we pick. And we can ask ourselves, well, what does G1 of N look like? Uh, and the other question we could ask is, well, suppose we had a new frequency response, um, G2 of E to the J omega hat, defined as multiplying h of e to the j omega hat by e to the minus j 5 omega hat and ask, well, what does g2 look like in this case? So what I'd encourage you to do now is pause the video and try and figure out your answers to these two questions. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and answered these two questions for yourself. In the first case, we can say, okay, well, what is my new impulse response going to look like if all I did was multiply the previous frequency response by A? Well, the, um, the linearity property of the discrete time Fourier transform says that G1 of N should just be A times H of N. So um, because we multiplied the transform by a factor of A, um, we um, should just um, multiply the impulse response by a factor of A. So G1 of N, our new impulse response, just looks like A times H of N. So that's one Fourier property that we use to answer the first question. Then to answer the second question, we use a different Fourier property. Now this transform was our old uh, discrete low pass filter, and we multiplied by e to the minus 5 omega hat, and that um, just delays the, um, delays the impulse response, because if we multiply by a complex exponential like this in the frequency domain, that corresponds to a delay in the time domain. So we can say that g2 of n will just be h of n minus 5, because the amount of the delay is just the number that you find there. So we've answered these two questions um, just using properties of the discrete time Fourier transform. So that those transform properties can really help us without uh, help us solve problems without having to go back through and recalculate the um, full inverse transform. This video was made for ECE 201 in fall 2018. For more information on George Mason University or the Volgeno School of Engineering, our ECE department, or on me, you can check out these websites. Thanks for watching.